Hi everybody, I'm the inspirational Andy Murray from WhatCulture.com and remember, become the fish you wish to see in the world. And I'm eccentric billionaire Adam Cleary. Hola gringos. Oh no, it's el paramedico. <laughs> Allow me to reintroduce myself, my name is News. <sighs> Thanks mate. Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and coming up today, my middle name's Dangerous, but you can call me Dange, and I'm gonna tell you about more of a WWE change. I like Bobby Lashley, he's really hard. Here's an update on the Extreme Rules card. If you haven't got any hot water, it could be your boiler, and I've got a potential Extreme Rules spoiler. I know a man named Carson Wentz, and you can get the WWE Network for 99 cents. I hope my lines, I don't flub, but I've got an update on the club. Either way, it doesn't matter. They may have left in cars, but Impact Wrestling just lost all their stars. If you came to my wedding, I want to say thanks. And I've got some more news about Sasha Banks. This is the news. Boom. God, I've missed One it. take, one take oh. straight into it. And uh, you might want to think about reprising your little gimmick there, Adam Wilborn, because Kofi Kingston, man, might be injured. That sounds like a job for... El Paro, oh God, do it my glasses on. El Paramedico. Great idea. Execution needs a little work. Either way. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, John, sorry. This, this is according to a write-up of a live event uh, somewhere in New York State from Lords of Pain last night. Basically, Kofi Kingston was scheduled to appear. He was going to wrestle on the show, but it was announced before the first match that an injury would prevent him from doing so. Now, Kofi was still there. He was fanning around with pancakes, dancing, doing New Day stuff all over the place. And he was ringside while Big E and Xavier Woods faced the B team. Um, they won that match. But it sounds like he might be hurt, and that is kind of troubling, considering he's supposed to be wrestling Samoan Joseph at Extreme Rules this weekend. Yeah, it's a, worry, a worrying sign with the uh, pay-per-view so close. However, as I've said before, if anyone would be the perfect person to take the title off him, not that I'm saying they should do it just because he's injured, or even, you know, that's the, the could be the catalyst for it yeah. all. Samoa Joe would be a great person to end that dream. Yeah, and it would like come off quite well if you put the injury over and like used it as the reason for Kofi's defeat. You could have Joe taking advantage of it, looking like even more of a prick. Then you could have a rematch, like an earned rematch, not just one of these pointless ones they book constantly over and over. Kofi could come out and say, well, I was injured, so like, you had an advantage, so let's do it again. I think it's a good shout. So is the next pay-per-view after Extreme Rules SummerSlam? Yes, it is. So there you go. Yeah, I think I think that'd be a perfect way to do it. Um, either way, or you just have him like the match be called off due to his injury, and then yeah. and then Joe's got another reason to have a, a rematch for the title. Exactly. I really like that. Uh, right, let's move on and give you an update about Monday Night Raw. I've been out of the loop recently, and things have gone insane. Apparently. <laughs> Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman are trying to kill each other. Literal is that what's murder. Happening? Yeah. Well, uh, an update from Fightful uh, has said that Paul Heyman has told several Raw creative team members that Vince McMahon, good news for this, is quote coming to grips with the fact that the show needs to be upgraded, and that's caused a lot of optimism backstage that we could finally be seeing a proper finally. change on Monday Night Raw. SmackDown Live and just generally in WWE. Yeah, good to hear stuff like this. It really is. Um, you know, it's hard to put like all the stock in the world into stuff like this because it's Vince and he changes his mind and all this stuff and he does stuff on a whim. Um, and it was kind of a shame to see very few Paul Heymanisms on last night's show, but the previous week's show was an encouraging step in the right direction. Good to hear stuff like this. Fightful have a track record, very reliable source. Yeah, let's hope it comes through. We'll find out over the coming weeks, I guess. Yeah, let's hope so. Anyway, uh, let's speak about Extreme Rules a little bit and what went down before and during last night's Raw. There were three changes to the card that we kind of need to talk about. Uh, two new additions. We got a new match in United States Champion Rick O'Shea, Irish wrestling legend, defending his belt against AJ Styles, who of course recently turned heel. Him and the club battered Ricochet around last night again. There was all kinds of crazy angles. That match is happening. It was confirmed on Twitter before Raw. We're getting a rematch of that wonderful beef slapping Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, um, last man standing match. We're getting that again at Extreme Rules. The first one was awesome. It was only like five minutes long and they probably can't put each other through the set again, but I'm looking forward to that. And of course, last night on Raw, Bobby Lashley hilariously squashed Rey Mysterio in 54 oh, yeah. seconds. Weird, but it was kind of fun. And also, we have a change to the SmackDown Women's title match. Instead of facing just Alexa Bliss, Bailey will now go up against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. She wants to play with Nikki. 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of speculation as to where that's going to lead. We'll get onto that in just a few yes, minutes. We because shall. Another Extreme Rules update for you. Paul Heyman last night again also teased the, the fact that Brock Lesnar could cash in <laughs> on either Seth Rollins or Kofi Kingston, or I think he said both at one yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. uh, he could be doing his cash in at Extreme Rules for either the Universal or WWE Championship. I don't see it happening. Yeah, nah, it's probably just Paul being a bell end again, well, isn't it's, it? It's the SummerSlam. SummerSlam's yeah. like a month away. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's when the cash-ins come in. Second biggest pay-per-view of the year are Extreme Rules. It's not a, not a hard choice. Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time WWE have gone, hey, he might cash in, and then go, actually, no. So He said he's developed, he's built up some, a reputation for his, his spoilers. Yeah. Uh, so he might be lying this time. Yeah, I think he is. Either way, cash-in or no cash-in, card looks pretty good. It's getting good. Extreme Rules. I'm yeah, excited. I sat through stomping ground, so I'll take out. <laughs> I'll take anything. Uh, let's move swiftly on. If you want to watch Extreme Rules, you can do so on the WWE Network. And guess what? WWE have come up with a rather crazy offer. This is a hell of a deal, by the way, to boost subscription numbers. And they're using Extreme Rules, SummerSlam, TakeOver, and I think Clash of Champions as selling points for this. Basically, a bunch of emails went out last night, and this is according to PW Insider, offering people who'd cancelled their subscriptions in the past the chance to re-up for three months for not $9.99, for not even $4.99, for 99 cents. What? For three months of programming. I should have canceled my subscription. A that's a hell of a goddamn deal. Um, that's tremendous value for money for an outrageously good streaming service. It's a library of wrestling history as well as more up-to-date stuff. It's an excellent deal, but, but, I mean, the timing of this is quite curious. What this... A uh, little deal will do is it'll boost subscription numbers all the way to the end of Q3. So when that Q the earnings report comes out, WWE's numbers are going to be looking a really rosy bit. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, no fans are going to be complaining about this, but it is kind of a cynical business move either way. It's a great, great deal um, for anyone who was cancelled. Yeah, and for wh whatever happens with with Royal Quest and All Out, they can always be like, "Well, look, we got loads more subscribers." Look so, at our numbers. Very, very clever. Cents. Although WWE are doing some great stuff when it comes to countering AEW when it comes to wrestlers, because there's another report from PW Insider says uh, AEW and New Japan. Japan were both interested in signing Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, but the promise of a push with AJ Styles' ridiculously amazing five-year offers cemented their decision to stay in the WWE, which I'm really, really happy about, to be perfectly honest. I know they would do fantastic things in AEW, and obviously if they return to Japan as well, but I'm really hopeful what, for what they're going to do with this reunited club and with potentially with Finn Balor. And I, I don't know what's going to happen in the future there, but yeah. I, I'm loving it. I obviously missed all last week. Mm -hmm. I've come back and gone, well, this is great news. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the best place for them, right? They can probably earn more money there than anywhere else. They can hang out with their mate AJ. They can have the road lifestyle, stay in the United States. I know Carl Anderson has like 20 kids. Um, it's probably a <laughs> nice, stable way of living for them. Um, I think Luke Gallows might be a bit of a mad shagger, but I digress. Um, it's, uh, how's that even relevant? I don't no, know. no, I think it's, it's, it's relevant. Yeah, bald men represent. Um, <laughs> I think it's a good move for them. Uh, New Japan's tag division, for all the other great stuff New Japan does, their tag division is horrendous. Yeah. It is, of course, headed up by the worst wrestler in the world, Tama Tonga. Oh, yeah, tell and, me. oh sorry, tell me. Yeah. And Camacho from WWE. <laughs> um, and AEW is, you know, it's kind of an unknown quantity at this point as far as tag wrestling goes, even though we have the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers and other wonderful units there. Yeah, good for them. Hope they scored big, big paydays. And it'll be good you to see did. my bald brethren getting a nice push. And congratulations to the revival on a lovely new t-shirt on WWE Shop as well. Very nice, actually. Which isn't hideous, so. Slightly better than the new uh, Seth Rollins t-shirt. You've seen that one? The man's man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not William Regal either. We're, <laughs> we're going to move on to Impact Wrestling for a little bit. We spoke about them yesterday. We got, um, we actually got a nice Twitter question from one of our super fans, Sam, Samai Coolahan, something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Big stuff we did, uh, we had Slammiversary ups and downs yesterday, courtesy of Mr. Simon Miller. And today we have a news update on three of the promotion's biggest stars. We're talking about Johnny Impact and LAX, the team of Santana and Ortiz, the longest reigning tag team champions in Impact history. Well, apparently all three of these men might be done. This is according to PW Insider and backed up by Shiggity Shagger 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 Dave of the Wrestling Observer. He claims that uh, LAX are pretty much done, their contracts expired, the pay-per-view was their last date for sure, and obviously AEW and WWE are in, well, they're really interested because they're a great tag team, of course they are. Um, Impact, Johnny Impact, meanwhile, he his contract actually expired a few weeks before the pay-per-view, but they worked out a deal for him to stick around to put Rich Swan over on that show. 
he might re-sign, LAX might re-sign, who knows, but it's going to be interesting to speculate on where these guys might yeah, end up. Yeah, all three of them, I'd be, I'd be fascinated whether they stay in Impact, but more so I'd say whether they went to AW or WWE. I, I loved uh, Johnny Impact when he was in WWE. Sexy, I thought it was fantastic. Right? I think it, LAX would probably be better off in AEW, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I mean, it's a chance for them to break out. They've kind of, over the past year or so, they have certainly enhanced their reputations and stuff, but if they can take their stuff to a more nat uh, natural, almost a national level mm -hmm. in AEW, they, I, I want to see those guys wrestle like the Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks and Cody and Dustin and Private Party and all these cool teams. Uh, so from a subjective standpoint, that's what I want to see. For sure. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, right, final news story to tell you about today, and it centers uh, around Sasha Banks, a potential return for her, rumored by Lords of Pain at this Sunday's Extreme Rules pay per view. As you mentioned earlier, there's that handicap match for Bailey SmackDown Women's Championship with uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross uh, going up <laughs> against Bailey. And the speculation is that, uh, yeah, Sasha Banks is going to make an appearance. When, now, whether that be getting involved in the match, getting involved post match, who knows, but there is a lot of speculation doing the rounds that Sasha Banks could be returning, and that would make sense on the eve of SummerSlam. Yeah, 100%. Good move for everyone involved. Um, she obviously has that affiliation with Bailey. They were tag team partners when Sasha walked away or threw a huff on the locker room floor, whatever the hell happened. Um, yeah, it, it ties in with yesterday's report that she might be on the in set for an imminent return. I am all for it. She's on the SummerSlam poster. Get her involved. She's too good, too good to be sitting around. Yeah, and I think you could bring her back and, and slowly build to that. Or whether you, they could do it straight away. Sasha Bailey feud yeah. that we've been waiting for for years on the main roster. Absolutely. Um, and that weird lesbian angle. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Don't forget to send them to us at WhatCultureWWE. Dan says, congrats on the wedding, Wilborn. Thank you, Dan. He says, question is, when will the 24-7 title be defeated? Defended on NXT and who will win it first? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that, well, I mean, I guess NXT has only really had one or two TV tapings since the 24 7 came in. Um, yeah, I think perhaps the next set, I mean, it seems like a logical thing to do. It's everywhere on the universe. It's great stuff. Obviously, the current 205 Live general manager is the, is the champion as well, so might even show up there. First champion, hmm, it's got to be some wacky Kemeny guy, really, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Bugs. Bugs. There you go. What is his name? Rick, Rick Bugs. Rick Bugs. Yeah, get yeah, him. Put the title on him. Yeah. Because he, he deserves that spotlight and I think he'd be the perfect person. I think he's that not, that perfect area of not too over to be like, oh, it's a bit weird that he's taken on this title and also needs a bit of elevation now. Absolutely. After that infamous first debut in the screen. Oh, just put the title on him. I'd love that. Uh, right, uh, Fat Momoa gives us our I second didn't. question today and said, in honor of Adam Wilborn's return, if you were to remake Titus Worldwide with the current roster, who's making the cut? That's definitely one for you, brother. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, Titus is obviously involved in chasing the 24-7 title, and I think I think maybe you know him trying to sign someone like R-Truth would be great because he wants to have like some gold on the roster. Um, What's going on with, I remember reporting a while, a week ago, so it might, have, it might be like completely forgotten now, with all the stuff with um, Ro uh, Robert Roode and EC3, what are they up to, all up to now? Fanning around on main event, apparently. Good, well, to get them into tight as well, why well, get them a bit of yeah. elevation there? That wonderful moustache would look wonderful, and yeah, EC3's not doing out, is he? No. Also, I just love the Street Profits, so chuck them in there as well. Just throw everyone who's yeah. fun. Yeah. All the, yeah, exactly, all the fun guys. Uh, <laughs> final question today uh, comes from uh, Daniel Morales, who says, do you guys think a storyline where Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson use the wild card rule, go to SmackDown and be with Finn Balor, and when they're on Raw, they are with AJ Styles. That eventually leads to a fight for the leadership of the club. What do you think of that? Yeah, that could be cool. I think it'd be a really interesting way to sow seeds of tension. Um, having two like disparate versions of the club is something I don't think they've ever really done before with a stable, or at least in the modern era. Yeah, I'm all for that, particularly if it leads to some big banger match between AJ and Finn, which was tremendous the last time we saw it. And we're always worrying uh, about Undisputed Era coming up, and we're always talking about them holding all the gold. I think it'd be great to put some sort of mid-card titles on, on AJ and Finn, and then maybe like the... I don't really want, don't want to never, I never want yeah. to take stuff off Daniel Bryan, but maybe like the SmackDown tag titles on the on the on Gallows and Anderson. Yeah, that'd be tremendous. Have stuff. them hold all the gold, and then that's where you start the infighting. That'd be tremendous stuff. Or from a sheer like sieve point of view, to see the internet burn down. How about they finally do this big feud? They have this match to determine the leader, and then they go finger poke of doom. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll put it out. out of the Vince question. Russo back, baby. Let's move on to today's and finally. And we were talking about wrestling t-shirts earlier, and there's some 
questionable ones out there. I know what's coming. <laughs> I want to give a shout out here to Contrarian Alex on Twitter, who tweeted this out and he did the rounds uh, yesterday, saying, well, WWE have often said, basically, here is the worst wrestling t-shirt that could possibly be released anywhere in the world. And then RH come along and makes this one. Hey, King Taven. King, King Taven. Oh, dear. Although I am reliably informed that that t-shirt isn't even the worst Taven t-shirt that there is. So. Oh, my goodness. You know what I'm going to ask next. Let us know your worst wrestling t-shirts on Twitter. Anyone sends me the Titus Worldwide one, you're getting blocked, okay? Because I'm not taking any nonsense now. I'm... I would have worn my Twitter one. <laughs> yeah. Critic! <laughs> Wait, shall we sign off? Let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can send us Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow him at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for hoops. You can follow the man who kept this chair warm for me and we'll be back later on today at Adam Cleary. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. God, it's good to be back. Hey. My thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching. And we will see you soon. Doctor. El Paramedico!